What's up everyone, this is Cole Davis and today we're going to talk about why you're practicing your scales wrong. Let's cut right to the chase. Most of you practice your scales like this. And if you're just practicing your scales that way, you're doing it wrong. Here's why. A lot of bass players have several unanswered questions. Why does my wrist hurt when I play? How come I can only play a good bass line in half position and nowhere else? Why do my solos sound like bass lines and not like good eighth note lines? I will answer all three of those questions with one answer. Because you're practicing your scales wrong. If you are just doing this, then you are ignoring 75% of the bass. If you've seen my videos, I talk about this all the time. I call it bass Tetris. We play the bass in a Tetris shape. So here's the right way to practice scales. Let's take the C major scale, for example. Let's do that again. So what am I doing there? I'm using the open strings to open up the instrument. This is the right way to practice scales. Now I'm not saying that this is bad, but if that's the only way you're practicing your scales, you're doing it wrong. In order to really learn the instrument, you need to practice your scales multiple ways. And I have a book that will help you do just that. My book, Scales and Arpeggios, is available at www.coldavismusic.com and it contains alternative fingerings to every major and minor scale, every major and minor arpeggio, and every dominant seven arpeggio for my jazz heads. We have dominant seven, sharp five, sharp nine, flat nine, sharp 11. Or you can ignore those and just focus on the major and minor scales. It's a full PDF containing a refingering of every scale and arpeggio that you will need to become a better bass player. You can also find the book on my Patreon. We have 150 Patreon subscribers now, but if you are not one of them, what are you doing? I've got two full albums on there with complete sheet music. I have several free books. I have 15 transcriptions with full videos, and I have the new Scales and Arpeggios book available on the Patreon. It's five bucks a month. I spent $10 on iced coffee today. You can spend $5 a month to get some great instructional materials at www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. What are you doing? Sign up for the Patreon. All right, back to the scales. So, with the Scales and Arpeggios book, I'm refingering all the major and minor scales to open up the bass. So the C major scale goes like this. Now, if you're just starting out, you might think that's a bit of a stretch. You might be like, wow, wait, I can't do that. But if you can do this, then of course you can do that. It takes the same amount of energy and the same amount of stretching and maneuvering your fingers to play both of those scales. We're just not used to the second one. Let's do that one more time. Now we'll try the F major scale. I'm going to use this open A right here. That's how I would play the F major scale. Now the reason why I'm doing this is not because I think this is bad. I think everyone should be fluent in half position, but I also think everyone should be fluent in the rest of the bass. I get a lot of emails from people who have bought my books and they say, well, I appreciate all the work you've done, but I like the old version better. Guess what? 
It's not about what you like better. It's about learning the whole base. I don't care what you like better. I don't care what fingering you prefer. It's not about your personal preference. This isn't about like an album that you prefer to another album. This is about learning the whole bass, which is something that I really believe in. So you might prefer playing in half position. A lot of us do. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn how to practice your scales the right way and also use this finger. Now, if you know both fingerings, there are so many things you can do. Because I know both fingerings, when I play an F blues, I can play an F blues all over the place. I can play an F blues here in fifth position and have you convinced that I'm playing in half position. position the rest was up here right but you would have thought I was in half position the whole time <laughs> to play the low F you have to be in half position yes but the rest of it you can do right here and the reason why you can do that is because of the open strings that's the key and practicing your scales with the open strings will open up the whole instrument let's do the F major scale one more time Let's try another scale. Let's try the B flat major scale. Right? Pretty simple. Sometimes we have to play a lower note to get to a higher strength. That's the disadvantage Sometimes with open strings, it can be a little tricky at first because you have to play a lower note on a higher string. So this G is lower than this A in pitch, but it is higher in string. Right, so, so I'm playing a, a higher string on a lower note <laughs> and then playing a lower string but a higher note. which at first is a little confusing. I've been doing this for a while, so for me, I, I, my muscle memory knows what's up. But if you're just starting out, it might be a little confusing at first, but I promise you it's worth it. It is so worth it. Let's try that B-flat major scale again. And then, if you're ready for two octaves, here's what you can do. See what I did there? Most people are trained to go up the G string. Right? Most people want to go up the G string. But why? Why? Who says? I'm already on the D string. So why am I going up the G string? Why would I do this? Why would I do this? I can just do this. Right, so the Scales and Arpeggios book is all about these kinds of fingerings. It might seem challenging at first, but it makes your life so much easier. Why do bass players get tendonitis? Because they're playing too hard? Well, maybe, but not quite. <laughs> because they're spending so much time in half position that their wrist starts to hurt at the end of the game. If you do this 
for 45 minutes, if you leave your wrist here for 45 minutes and you don't let it move, it's going to start to hurt. If you leave your hands here for 45 minutes and, and don't move, which is the average length of a set on a game, if you leave your hands here for 45 minutes and you don't move your hands, of course it's going to hurt. If you do a plank for five minutes, your abs are going to hurt. You know, so if you're doing a plank, of course it's going to take them, of course it's going to hurt. But if you let your hand move and you know how your hand can move around the instrument freely, then you'll never get tendonitis, at least not in your left hand, because your wrist will be moving and your hands will be moving. And that's important. Most people stay in half position for a whole gig and then they wonder why their wrist hurts. But if you can play a bass line on an F blues in fifth position and half position, then your wrist will be fine and your bass lines will actually improve because you'll have more ideas. A lot of people wonder why do their solos sound like this? stiff kinds of root heavy bass lines like not really solos maybe because you don't have the vocabulary but if you're playing this instrument and you're playing jazz you probably have some vocabulary the reason why you can't express that vocabulary is because you're only playing in half position <laughs> if i want to play a good solo on an f blues it's easy for me because i know all of this is over here. And then if I want to add half position, I can play an even better solo. playing the whole bass, and I can do that in my walking too. So nothing was untouched there. I played the entire bass in that solo, and I played that entire bass in my walking lines. And I do that on every gig, every video, everything I do involves the whole bass. And that's always been a goal of mine. How can I involve the whole bass? And then how can I simplify the whole bass so people like you can be familiar with the whole instrument and not just half position? And the answer is how you practice your scales. Fortunately. I have a book called Scales and Arpeggios on my website that will help you understand the whole bass by practicing your scales correctly. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support means a lot to me, and I could not do this without you. You can follow me on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash coldavismusic, or check out my web store at www.coldavismusic.com. CD out.